good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank the Glendora Historical Society for bringing me back for, believe it or not, my third lecture. So I've lectured twice before for you guys, so now this is my third lecture. We're going to see some amazing depots on this little journey through Southern California. Uh, a little bit of background about myself. Again, I have been measuring and studying and drawing depots uh, since around 1985. Um, I love researching depots, finding ones that may, people may not know about, or even just studying the ones that are here. I'm an advocate for depot preservation. Um, I love making relationships with different historical societies and individual historians and communities. And um, this is the Leister B. Holland Prize that I won in 2017. It's a national award. And believe it or not, it was for all things a barn. So it wasn't even a railroad depot that I won the competition with. But it's still, it's a proud achievement. And um, just recently, I drew a map for the Camp Cajon group. Um, they just put up a historical placard um, that shows the entire Camp Cajon campground that existed from 1919 to 1938. And I took historic photographs and drawings and aerial photography and historical documentation. And I created a 3D map. And this uh, map is gonna be on display up at the Cajon site. Um, and it's gonna be visited by thousands of people that not only stop there to hike the trail, but also people curious about the history of the area. So it's just you know a little bit of different things that I do. I don't just study and research depots, although that is my favorite subject. So tonight we're going to study two counties. Um, some of these depots you may have seen before in some of my previous presentations, but most of them are new. Um, first, we're going to uh, split it up into two parts. We're going to look at Riverside and then San Bernardino. And uh, I thought it was neat to include this slide because. These are two existing depots that still survive in both of those counties, and they're quite impressive. So a little background about these counties. Um, you know, a, a lot of California counties were formed um, after statehood in the 1850s, um, but they continue to evolve. So there were larger counties that continuously um, were broken up into smaller counties. Um, Originally, San Diego County took up a big chunk of Southern California, as well as San Bernardino County. That was in 1892. By 1893, the larger part of San Diego County was carved up into three separate counties. So we had the addition of Riverside, Imperial, and the remaining portion of San Diego. There's a railroad map that kind of gives you an idea of the different railroads that were coming into these counties. Um, the blue lines are Santa Fe. The red lines are the Pacific Electric. Green lines are the Southern Pacific. And the yellow is Union Pacific. Um, of course, the earliest railroad in the area was the Southern Pacific. They started from Los Angeles in the 1870s um, and spread throughout Southern California. Um, we had the Santa Fe coming a little bit later, about a decade later in the 1880s and 1890s. Uh, then after that, in the early 1900s, we had the Pacific Electric. Um, they started doing their interurban electric railways, snaking throughout these counties. And then a little bit of a latecomer was the uh, Union Pacific. That's a little historical background um, talking about the uh, Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe and the Pacific Electric and the Union Pacific. And this lecture is being recorded, so you can come back and take a look at this um, in the future. All right, so first we're going to take a look at some of the select and surviving depots of San Bernardino County. So there were a lot of different depots, and sometimes cities had multiple railroad stations. So if you look at San Bernardino, for example, it had a Santa Fe, a Southern Pacific depot, and a Pacific Electric. Redlands had the same thing. Ontario had a Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, Pacific Electric. So you can see that you know, some communities were served by one railroad, sometimes two, three, and on the rare occasion, four. Of these depots, 
that are shown here, this is how many survive today. So quite a dramatic um, change in, you know, how these uh, buildings were um, saved and used by the communities. So whereas, you know, at the beginning of the 1880s and up until the 1920s and 1940s, we used to have, you know, hundreds of depots that were throughout Southern California, but today only a handful of these depots survive. So this particular jaunt through uh, depot history is organized alphabetically. Um, I thought that was the easiest way to organize these uh, depots. Um, most, again, of these depots are gone. However, you know, some still survive. Uh, this was an unusual Southern Pacific depot that was built in Bloomington um, in 1896, closed in 1955. Um, it was actually jointly used later by the Pacific Electric but it is a unique styled depot. Um, here is the Bryn Mawr or Redlands Junction Depot. This was built in 1892. This was a standard Southern Pacific number 18 depot built in a large number um, in California and Oregon, um, but mostly in California. This is their second most popular depot type. Next, we move to Cajon. This is a Santa Fe depot built in 1885, but was removed by 1962. And um, this was a popular rail fanning spot for people to go up and watch the trains coming up the steep Cajon grades. Here's another number 18 depot. This was built in 1891 and closed in 1963 in the community of Chino. The second floor of this particular depot type was used by the agent and his family. So where you had a rural area and you wanted to keep the agent in the depot, they provided these two-story depots so they had living quarters. And they would have two bedrooms, a little living room, a kitchen. Um, so they lived upstairs. And then when it, the train time came, they came downstairs, opened up the depot, and conducted their freight baggage ticket sales for passengers and things like that. Um, next, alphabetically, we come to the community of Colton. Um, this charming little depot was the community's third depot, built in sort of a mission style, 1927. Here's a back view of it. Um, this depot was closed in 1979, um, but it still exists today. So this is a look at it in 1991, and a more contemporary uh, view of it from 2013. Um, it's currently used as offices for the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe Railway. Um, those, the Burlington Northern and the Santa Fe merged, so it's now under that flag. But um, it's used for their, uh, I believe, their maintenance of way. Again, this is an example where I said a, a particular community was served by multiple railroads. This is Southern Pacific's depot in Colton, California. A uh, charming little depot built in 1887. Um, the second floor again, um, this particular time was used as offices for railroad staff. Here's a view of the busy train yards at Colton. Um, this is a very important uh, interchange point for the Southern Pacific and the uh, Santa Fe and also the Pacific Electric. Um, in 1922, this particular depot was remodeled. Um, starting in around the 1920s, a lot of these older wooden style depots were being upgraded by the different railroads. Um, they saw the Victorian style as falling out of favor, and it was a cheap and inexpensive way to rehabilitate a station was to strip off all the Victorian detailing, stucco it, and then rebuild it, um, rather than building a brand new station. Here's a look at the uh, joint usage with the Pacific Electric red cars that are at the end of the depot. And there's another view of another Pacific Electric car. Um, sadly, this depot uh, was demolished in 2012 um, when they built the flyover for the Santa Fe tracks and Union Pacific. So the depot was a victim of that um, uh, flyover. Here's another Southern Pacific Depot. This again, another number 18. Kind of, you've seen this one before, haven't you? Um, again, it's a very popular depot style. This is the one that was in Crafton, uh, built in 1892 and 1944. So as you notice on a lot of these dates, 
the railroad would use a particular style of depot for a couple of years. So depending on what year they were building a particular branch line, that they would have a favorite style of depot to build. So this number 18 style was built mostly in 1891, 1892, up until about 1895, depending again on where the railroad was when it was building. Here is the depot for the Santa Fe in Cucamonga. Uh, this was built in 1887. And again, the railroad remodeled this one in 1945. And what a transformation. So they literally stripped off all the Victorian woodwork. They shortened the depot on both ends and they turned it into a streamlined modern depot. So in the bones of this you know, streamlined modern depot is the original 1887 framing from the old Victorian style depot. So the Santa Fe was very big on remodeling um, their older style depots. There's very few that survive today. Here's a look at the Southern Pacific Depot in Cucamonga. Um, because the uh, communities wanted to shorten the name of the Santa Fe from North Cucamonga to Cucamonga, they went over and they asked the Southern Pacific if they would be willing to rename their Cucamonga Depot to Gustai. And that's where that little winery is um, out there today. Um, so that occurred in 1910, and this depot was closed in 1963 and removed shortly thereafter. Um, but this is a, a number 17 two-story depot. Again, the agent and his family would live upstairs. Um, coming alphabetically to Devor, this is, um, was built in, the 19, in 1904 and removed in 1949, two-story depot. And I believe this one was uh, made with uh, cast concrete. So it's an early example of um, concrete and stucco for depots. Here's a little community of Etiwanda, uh, Santa Fe, built in 1887, removed by the 1920s. Etiwanda was also served by the Pacific Electric. So this is their charming little uh, mission style depot built in 1914 closed in 1941, but fortunately it is still with us today. So um, it is a waiting preservation, but it is boarded up um, and it's along the Pacific Electric uh, walking slash bike trail. So um, there are plans in place to rehabilitate it. It's just that uh, whether it's funding or just, uh, you know, things like that have not, it hasn't happened yet. And this building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Coming to Fontana, this is a joint Southern Pacific and Pacific Electric uh, Depot. So you could get your um, tickets for both railroads here and it was served by both. Also had a railway express agency. Now, while we're looking at this particular depot, the depot did not survive. However, the freight depot that you can see in the background next to the rail car, which is right here, did. And this is the freight depot that survives today. So sadly, we lost the depot, but we still have the freight house, that uh, a separate building that was with it. And it's been uh, restored and uh, adaptively reused as a business. Montana, uh, Santa Fe Depot. Um, this particular depot was built in 1925 and closed in 67. And what happened with a lot of these depots is almost as soon as they were closed, they were usually demolished um, soon after. Or in some cases, they got burned um, due to vandalism or carelessness. Um, I always love this little depot. This is the depot at Loma Linda. Um, and this was a 1888 uh, shelter slash baggage building. And it was washed away in the floods of 1916. Um, but it's a charming little depot. And I actually have the blueprints for this uh, particular station. Again, alphabetically, we are coming into Mentone. Uh, this charming depot was built in 1892, but sadly it was demolished in 1940. But here it is in happier days in 1931. 
coming to the community of Ontario. This again is a number 17 type depot, which was uh, popular in this year of 1887 when the Southern Pacific was coming through uh, this area. Um, so this particular depot was um, a two-story. And again, the railroad remodeled it in both 1918 and 1930 by stuccoing it. They extended the waiting area and made an open air waiting area. And they also extended the freight house. But you can see all of the Victorian siding and everything has been all covered over with stucco. So this was a modernization of this depot. Um, sadly, it was demolished in 1972, the year that I was born, by the way. <laughs> All right, coming over to another depot in Ontario. This is the Salt Lake route, um, which later became Union Pacific. Um, this particular depot was built in 1903. However, again, like many other depots, it was remodeled in 1924, um, a pretty dramatic um, renovation that turned it into a more of a mission style. Um, it was um, closed as a depot in 1970 and demolished um, in the same year. Um, here's the charming little brick depot of Patton, California. This was built in 1897. Um, sadly, this depot was just recently demolished in 2020 which really is just, it's a tragedy. Um, but a really charming little depot. Um, the Santa Fe built a couple of these brick style depots. There was a, another one in Paris, California that survives that we will see a little bit later in this lecture. Um, there was also a one that was called the Le Grand Depot that existed in Los Angeles and that was built at around the same time and was built in the Moorish style which is kind of reminiscent of what this uh, particular depot was. Um, next, we're coming into Redlands. So this uh, charming little depot was built in 1910. It replaced an earlier Santa Fe depot that was there. In fact, the uh, early Wood Victorian Santa Fe depot is in the very background. Um, you kind of see it just peeking over the roof right here. There's the Victorian roof and everything. Um, this depot was recently rehabilitated as part of the uh, rail, electric rail lines that are running out that way. And so it was uh, refurbished in 2020. Also on the National Register of Historic Places. Southern Pacific also had a Redlands Depot. This particular style was a colonnade depot. Um, starting in the early 1900s, the Southern Pacific was getting away from their wooden siding depots, and they were starting to build these colonnade style depots. And this was one of the first ones that they built, and it was here right in Southern California. Um, most of these um, later were starting to be built up in the Central Valley and in Northern California. Um, there's very only just a couple examples in Southern California. Um, here it is in joint use as a Pacific Electric and Southern Pacific Station. Again, the railroad in this instance decided that the old colonnade style depot had outlived its usefulness after only 23 years. And they replaced it with this more modern concrete um, railroad depot in Redlands. And I actually, uh, this picture is actually taken from a concrete mixing magazine that espouses the uh, benefits of building an all concrete structure. So this is an all concrete building. Here's a view of it a little bit later um, in 1947, just a few years before it was uh, closed in 1953 and then demolished. It's such a shame. Um, here is the community of Rialto. Um, again, this is kind of like Santa Fe's um, favorite kind of depot uh, built in the 1880s. Uh, it's this like Victorian uh, East Lake style depot. Um, you can see the Santa Fe logo up here on the roof, and of course the station name. Um, this particular depot was like others remodeled. Get ready. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so 
this uh, particular depot underwent a, quite an extensive remodeling. Again, it was shortened and all the Victorian woodwork was all stripped off. But the walls, the bay window, all that is original from 1887. Um, of course, all the windows and doors are all either replaced, but all the framing is, is there. And this depot, believe it or not, still exists today. It's a, uh, it's a business. And that's the address of it, 2239 West Stonehurst uh, Drive in Rialto. So that's a picture of it back in, in 2003. But you can see it's very similar, you know, you can see the eaves there and the gable ends. It's the same building. So it was uh, relocated in 1969. So if you're adventurous and you want to drive out to Rialto, you can go check out this uh, building. Um, this is the Pacific Electric Depot that was in the community of Rialto, built in 1914, closed in 1947, and it was turned into a radiator shop and then later as a restaurant, uh, which it currently is in use uh, today. Again, we're starting to come towards the end here. This is the San Bernardino uh, Depot. Um, this was jointly built between the Southern Pacific and the uh, Salt Lake uh, Railroad. So it was jointly used by both. Um, and it's kind of neat to see the, blue, the original blueprints for this building, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, sadly, again, it's not with us today. Um, but eventually the Southern Pacific stopped running their trains to San Bernardino, and then they converted it into a Pacific Electric Station. And then even later still, it was uh, used by the Greyhound. So this is the time when it's in joint use between those two uh, entities. There's a back view of the station being served by the Pacific Electric. Um, it eventually was removed and the carousel, carousel mall was built in its place, which I think now in itself is being removed or something like that. Um, Here's a look at the Santa Fe impressive two-story uh, depot at um, San Bernardino. This was a magnificent East Lake style depot. Here's a backside, trackside view of it. This depot sadly burned down in 1916, but um, sometimes better things come along when you lose something. And now we have quite the impressive uh, mission style depot that is um, with us today, built in 1918. And it also is on the National Register of Historic Places. If you ever watched the movie The Changeling with Angelina Jolie, the uh, San Bernardino Depot stood in for Los Angeles study. Uh, the Los Angeles uh, Central Station in the 1920s. So here's the uh, street side view of the depot, or track side view of the depot. Um, and it's also currently a museum. Um, so if you go there, it's a fantastic museum. I highly encourage you to go out there and visit it. Um, here is the Santa Fe Depot at Summit. Um, this station was established in 1885. Um, and then this little particular depot was removed in 1969. Again, this was another favorite spot for rail fan people to go to. And if you look carefully in the background up here, if you're a railroader, you'll recognize that as the car descanso. And that car was a place where different railroaders would go up there, watch the trains coming up the hill. Um, the car was preserved and it was moved down to the Southern California Railroad Museum and restored. But sadly, the uh, depot did not survive. Um, at the end of our alphabet, we're coming up to Upland. Um, this particular depot, again, it's kind of like a standard Santa Fe, you know, East Lake style Victorian depot. Uh, it was remodeled in 1911 and demolished in 1937. And this is the depot that replaced it. So this was built in 1937, closed in 1978. Okay, what do you guys think the next slide shows? Did this depot survive or didn't it? Anyone? How many think that it survived? A good number of you, you're correct. 
So it's reused as a business today. So you can go and visit this depot and uh, you know take a look at it. Um, the Pacific Electric also served Upland. Uh, this particular depot was uh, built in 1915 and uh, moved a couple blocks over in 1928. So here it's showing it in its new location. Um, but sadly, this depot was demolished in 1967. All right, so that was a quick run through San Bernardino County. Now we're going to take a look at some of the surviving um, and select depots of Riverside County. So this is my home county. Um, I grew up in the small town of Indio, California, <coughs> down near Palm Springs, if you're not familiar with that area. Um, and I fell in love with the railroad stations there, um, particularly Indio, where I grew up. So here's a look at all of the different depots that used to exist in Riverside County. Now, this next slide will really shock you. Only the smallest fraction of depots survive. Sadly, there's no Southern Pacific depots that survive. <laughs> and um, they're almost all uh, Santa Fe and one um, Salt Lake slash Union Pacific depot that survives. So um, let's take a look. Um, in the community of Arlington, kind of near, um, uh, down near Riverside, um, this little charming depot, it's a standard Santa Fe uh, East Lake style uh, wooden Victorian depot. Um, it was moved from Elsinore Junction. It wasn't uncommon to move depots back in the day if service at one particular station was not enough. Um, but sadly, um, this one did not survive and burned in 1963, shortly after it closed. Here's a look at Banning. This um, particular depot, I wish I had a better photograph of it, but this is the only known photograph of the first um, Banning depot right here. This is the Freight House Inn. Um, sadly, I don't have a, the other half of it, so I'm always on the lookout for trying to find this particular depot. Um, but it was a number one, which was a rare depot type in Southern California. Um, it lasted until it was replaced by this uh, depot in 1904. Um, this depot survived until 1963 until um, it sadly burned down and was not replaced. Here's the community of Beaumont, um, another number 17 depot, um, again built in the 1880s era, 1887 specifically. Um, it was abandoned in 1963, and then it was removed. Um, here's Cabazon. This was a small board and batten depot type. Um, the smaller board and batten depot types were built by the Southern Pacific as some of their first depot types. It was very inexpensive to build. It was fast. Um, and in some cases, as you'll see later, portable. Um, but this is the small uh, board of Bat Depot at uh, Cabazon, and it lasted until 1958. Here's another standard uh, Santa Fe Depot. This one is at Casablanca, uh, built in 1897 and demolished in 1967. But I just love the details in this photograph. You can see the lattice work. You can see the Victorian ridge cresting, all the shingle patterns. Um, faux lattice work on here. I mean, just, you know, as much as I love the Southern Pacific, I really do admire the architecture and the beauty of the Santa Fe depots because they were truly unique. Um, also, that can also be said for a lot of the Pacific Electric depots. Even though they were underneath the Southern Pacific umbrella, um, a lot of Pacific Electric depots were very unique in architectural design and style. Talking about standards in the railroads, this is a standard number 23 Oakdale design depot that was built in Coachella uh, in 1906. Um, this particular depot was closed in 1960. Um, there, this particular type is a single story. There was a two story version of it, the number 22 depot type, which had living quarters on the second floor. 
But in this instance, uh, there was housing around in the community. So the agent could live nearby, run out to the depot at train time, open it up, and then um, close it at the end of the day. Alphabetically again, next we're coming into Corona. Um, this charming little depot was built in 1937 in kind of like a Spanish mission style. Okay, how many think that this depot is around today? Raise your hand. Okay, in the mood for some uh, food, Mexican food or something? <laughs> so um, yes, this depot has been saved and preserved and it's a Mexican restaurant today. Um, this is uh, down in Dos Palmas. Um, we're going to see this particular depot again. It will come back. Again, remember I mentioned how sometimes uh, some depots were portable. Um, this one moved around a lot. <laughs> we'll see it again. Um, this station was established um, as early as 1876, um, but the depot came a little bit later. Um, here it is in 1878. Um, we have some early other additional buildings like a section house and a little uh, bunk quarters and things like that, square water tower. Um, this is your early remote desert station out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so this is basically almost the halfway point between Los Angeles and Yuma, Arizona. So it's out in the, in the desert area. Um, almost... Uh, I think this area now is actually covered by the Salton Sea today. Um, here's a little uh, telegraph station that was built at Edom, which was Thousand Oaks, um, or I'm sorry, Thousand Palms. Um, this was built in 1883. Um, this was a very early station type for the Southern Pacific, early as a telegraph and also as a station agent's office. And this little area here was an open breezeway between the two sections. So the agent lived in this part, but his office was in this part. Later on, the railroad would often fill this in. And uh, if you needed to use the restroom, uh, there's one conveniently located to the of the building. Remember, this looks very similar to the last slide that we saw. Um, these early um, telegraph office types were built in a small number, especially along this uh, portion of the Southern Pacific's route going towards Yuma and even beyond. Um, so this is the one that's at El Casco. It was a telegraph office and a depot, closed in 1955 and then eventually removed. Um, if you're adventurous and you're up for your exercise and you want to go inspecting the railroad tracks, try riding on the velocipede here in the foreground. So you sat on here in the seat, and then these rails, or I should say wheels, sat on this set of tracks here. This one sat on this side. And then by pulling the bar back and forth, you were able to go um, forward down the tracks so you can inspect the uh, tracks. So this was actually more preferred than the hand car where you actually had stand and then, you know, pump the hand car up and down. Elsinore is our next stop. This was built in 1896 and closed in 1968. Um, I had the privilege of visiting this depot because it still exists. And it's now the community's chamber of commerce. So it's quite a charming little depot. It is a little drive out there, but you know, if you're up for taking a little trip, I mean, it's, it's worth it to check out this uh, depot. Next, we're gonna look at Hemet. This is actually very similar to the previous depot that was at Elsinore. Um, this depot in its entirety did not survive, but part of it did. The freight house portion was remodeled and included in this um, depot in 1914. So um, there's the freight house portion, part of it was re recycled from the uh, previous depot. And uh, now it's a museum. I was just there a couple of months ago, actually. It's very cool. And if you're so inclined, there's a coffee shop that occupies this end of the depot so you can get a coffee or a little treat or something like that. Um, this is a little known depot. There's not a lot of great photographs of it. Um, 
This is the High Grove Depot. This was also a number 23 standard one-story depot that was built by the Southern Pacific. Um, wasn't around very long. It was uh, closed by 1925 and was only built in 1897. So real short lifespan for this one. Um, Santa Fe also served High Grove. This is their uh, little uh, East Lake style Victorian depot. It was dismantled in 1953. Um, here is the other depot in Highland. Uh, this was built in 1891, um, and it actually ended up being served by the Pacific Electric when they were running their interurban electric lines out towards that area. And it sadly was replaced in 1951 with this building. Um, I wish I had a little bit of a better photograph of this. Um, it was closed and moved in 1962, and now it's a private residence. So. Um, of course, you can't go in there, but if you're driving down the street, you can uh, you can go visit this one. Um, this is the magnificent East Highlands uh, Depot. Um, this one was built in 1891, and it burned in 1916. Um, if you're over at the Arboretum, there is a sister depot that looks almost identical to this depot that survives today. So that's the Arcadia um, Santa Fe depot. But it's a, uh, it's a direct, um, if not a sister to it, it's like a brother. The designs are almost identical with the two story, the single story, even down to almost the uh, chimney and everything. Um, forward thinking, they thought, well, would depots Burn. Let's make our next one out of stone. <laughs> kind of like the three pigs, you know, they're kind of progressive in their uh, depot building and design. Um, so this was built in 1916, but sadly it was demolished in 1970. Ah, India, home. <laughs> um, this is the depot that actually started it all for me, folks. So when I was a kid, I saw pictures of this depot and I wanted to see it. So I went to my middle school library. I found our local history publication, 11 years old. I wandered out into the busiest railroad yards in Southern California. These massive diesel engines are rolling by. I've got my book in my hand and I'm walking through and managed not to get killed because I'm here today. Um, but I wasn't there for maybe about 10 minutes before an old time railroader came up to me and said, son, it's not safe for you to be here. And I said, well, I'm looking for this building. And I showed him the picture all naively, kind of rolled his eyes and he said, son, that thing burned down 20 years ago. So I was disappointed. He saw that and it changed his attitude towards me. And he said, I used to work in that building. And he started telling me stories about the history of the building and working in there and you know staying in the upstairs rooms and stuff. And it sparked a passion in me to learn more about this particular building. So I did, I wrote to like the National Archives, I wrote to all these different railroad groups and everything. And I I learned all that I could. And now I'm like the leading expert on the railroad history of India when I've written a book on it and you know publications and uh, things like that. But um, you know sadly this was gone before my time, but it didn't stop me from trying to find out as much as I could about it. And it led to my interest and passion in other depots. And hey, here I am 20 years later in the field of architecture working for one of the best architects in the nation and I won a national prize for it. You know, hey, who knew? Mm -hmm. All from that uh, running around in the railroad yards and not getting killed. Um, this um, alphabetically, now we're going to look at uh, March Air Force Base. Um, my dad was in the military, both my parents were, and he used to take us out there, but sadly, he never took me to this depot. <laughs> so I didn't even know it was out there. If, if I had, if he had known about it or had thought about it, he might have brought me out there. Um, but this particular, again, was a standard uh, Santa Fe Depot uh, built in 1880, 
eight, but sadly it burned in 1980, just after it closed. Um, I think there were plans to restore it as a museum, but that failed. Um, this is the town of Mecca. This is a little bit south of Indio. Um, originally it was the community of Walters. Um, here's a look at their depot a little bit later. And this was kind of a unique feature in the desert. They built a second roof above the lower roof because you're in the desert and you need as much protection from the heat and sun as you can. So this is an early adaptation of that. And here is a later replacement depot. Uh, this was built in 1916 and closed in 1958. If you were to go out to Mecca today, there's no trace of any of the railroad heritage other than the palm trees are uh, still in that area. Uh, the same thing with Indio, by the way. When the uh, depot hotel burned down, um, a lot of the palm trees around that area survived. So they are actually the oldest living residents of the Coachella Valley. They're over 130, you know, 140 years old. Um, here's the little uh, station of Mort Mort Mortmark. Um, this was built in 1943, so it's a, you know much, much later in our journey. Um, it was built during the war, and it closed in 1957. This is a train order office, so the trains could stop there and pick up their orders. Um, this charming little depot was built in Palm Springs, uh, built in the 1880s. It went through a couple of name changes over the years, but the depot stayed in almost the same spot. Um, it was renamed Garnet later. Um, again, the agent and his family lived in the depot, so there they are there with their trusty dog. And um, behind them is the freight house, um, and you can see that in the background. This was another one of those early uh, telegraph station types, but that was expanded for the for an agent and his family. Here's a later look of it uh, in 19 uh, in the 1940s. And remember those palm trees because, oh, I don't have a picture of it, but the modern Palm Springs uh, Amtrak station is almost in the same spot, and some of the uh, palm trees are still there today. So if you ever journey out to Palm Springs and go looking for that, where that station used to be, you can see the modern uh, palm trees. The reason I didn't include that slide is because the depot was built after, uh, it was more modern. Um, one of the replacement depots that they did in uh, West Palm Springs was this charming little mission style depot. Um, it was uh, built in, uh, it was designed in 1929, but because of the Great Depression, a little problem or a hiccup in our national economy, um, it wasn't built until 1934. Um, this depot survived until 1970 when it was uh, torn down but it's not in the same location as the previous Palm Springs Depot that I showed you. Um, this was actually much closer to Palm Springs, but you still had a 20 minute stage car ride from this station actually to Palm Springs. So you had to either buy, or either had to get a taxi or have somebody from town pick you up to bring it into Palm Springs proper. This depot was way away from the, the city as we know it. Um, here's a look at the Santa Fe Depot in Paris. Uh, everyone knows this depot. It's very charming. Um, I'm so happy that it's preserved. Um, it was closed as a depot in 1971, uh, but right afterwards it became a museum. So, and recently it just underwent a massive restoration. Um, so they have a metro loop that actually serves this uh, particular station. And it's just down the tracks, literally, from the uh, South Coast Railroad Museum. So every time I go out to that railroad museum to go look in their archives or go ride and play on the trains, I still do, um, I go and I visit this uh, particular depot. Um, here's our namesake for the county, our county seat of Riverside. Um, this was the impressive all brick um, Southern Pacific Depot built in 1898. Um, and what's nice is that this photo shows the nice Southern Pacific logo right here on the side of the building. Um, so this is all brick. Um, 
almost like an early version of the or a precursor to the colonnade style depot that I was talking about earlier in the lecture. Um, so this is all brick, and in fact, they they cut the brick um, or they uh, incised the brick so it said Riverside. So there it is right there. Here's the ticket window. Um, this depot was jointly used later with the Pacific Electric. So here's a Pacific Electric car uh, serving at the front of the depot. This particular station was closed in 1941. I'm not sure the year that it was demolished, but it wasn't too long after that. Here's Santa Fe's Riverside Depot, the first one that they had, um, built in 1886. Again, uh, kind of a East Lake Victorian style depot. This was replaced in 1927 with this Hobie inspired um, Southwestern uh, Revival Depot. So this is the only uh, Hobie Revival style depot of its type in all of California, I believe. Um, again, this was built in 1927 and it still survives with us today. Here's a look at it in 1971. And it's reused as uh, different businesses uh, and professional offices. So that's um, down there in Riverside. Really charming depot. Here is the Salt Lake Route Depot that was built in 1904. Um, again, this was later acquired by the Union Pacific Railroad. Um, but this Magnificent depot, as you already saw, still survives today. Here it is at in the 1940s. It's really a charming building. Um, it did suffer a little setback, uh, caught fire. Um, usually that's the end of the story for most of these depots. However, um, there's another picture of it still smoldering. And of course, the community came out to take a look at it. It was restored. And if you're in the mood for, again, Mexican food, um, you can go out and go to the El Patron Mexican restaurant that is in the depot today. And we're also fortunate that this depot was placed on the uh, National Register of Historic Places. Um, remember I told you that you were gonna see that one little uh, Dos Palmas depot again? Oh, here it is. Right there, moved now to the town, um, if you could call it that, it's actually just a station of Salton, California. So what do we have down near Salton that people know about? Salton Sea, anyone? So in 1905, some farmers are doing some diversionary work on a little canal down in Imperial County. And there's some massive flooding that happens on the Colorado almost at the same time. The canal overflows, goes through the little cut, and floods a couple hundred acres of Southern California. And now we have this big salt lake right in the middle of Southern California, um, south of uh, India. Um, so when that was happening, the railroad, of course, didn't want to lose their tracks or their depots. They picked them up and they moved them. The water kept getting higher. They picked the depot up, they moved it again. So this depot, I think, was moved. Um, it was originally the depot for Indio um, for a couple of years. Then it was moved to Dos Palmas. Then it was moved to Salton. Then it was moved to Salton. Then it was moved to Salton. So it was moved a total of five times, at least, that I can count. So one of the more moved depots of the Southern Pacific. Um, during its last times being moved, it was uh, modified slightly. It was a little bit enlarged and lengthened. So you can see that in the end there. Um, sadly, this depot did not survive. Um, it was gone by the 1940s, I believe. Um, here's the depot of San Jacinto, California. Again, another standard Santa Fe depot. It was remodeled like other depots. And this was it after its remodeling in 1947. I think this is probably one of the worst remodel jobs I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it's like, the only thing I recognize is the freight door. I mean, the rest of it just, it's, it's a box. It looks awful. Um, 
So it's maybe a better fate that it didn't survive. <laughs> kind of sad. Um, here goes another uh, number 23 depot type. This was built at Thermal. Remember, we saw a similar one in Coachella, California, just down the tracks. Um, this one was built in 1909 and closed by 1956. And you can see that this particular depot was under construction. And you can see the brick foundation in this photograph right here. So they haven't backfilled the dirt um, on this depot just yet. So you can kind of see how they were constructed. They, all of these wooden style depots were built on these brick foundations with uh, raised wood floors inside. When the railroad would remodel them in the 20s and 30s, they'd come in and usually put concrete down on the floors inside these buildings. I think this might be our last depot of the evening. This is at Winchester, um, down again in Riverside County. Um, this particular one opened up in 1890 and had a short service life. It closed by 1929. But uh, again, another Santa Fe uh, one-story standard depot. So with that, if you're interested in more information about some of these depots, because I only covered just a fraction of them, I highly recommend taking a look at these books. Um, they're great resources on the history of this area and the depots that are in this area. So it's almost like required reading or uh, you know fun reading for you guys. But with that, I'd like to open it up to questions and thank you for coming out this evening and sharing this uh, wonderful little railroad journey with me.